Hola, 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 ¿cómo están? Hola, 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 ¿cómo están? ¿Cómo están haciendo? How are you doing today? So, today we're going to talk about Cassie's lawsuit. Oh, you haven't heard? If you've been living under a rock, don't feel bad, girl, because, you know, I've been under a rock for like 10 years. Because <laughs> I've been in school and that's what school does to you. You'd be living straight under a rock and it's just one of those things that happens. So anyway, let me get you caught up because we are no longer underneath that rock. Okay. Cassie sued Diddy. Okay. For, I can't use the A word on YouTube. I, you know, I can't use, but for being physically damaging to her physical harm physical and mental arm harm so cassie sued her him um then she backtracked and settled so i guess he paid her out i don't know why he paid her out it's not like Didi has it's like we all know now we know, we I don't think we really had a good idea before, but now that this has come out with Cassie, it's literally all we needed in order to really see what was really good when it comes to Didi, okay? I keep having to fix my shirt underneath my thing here, but when it comes to Didi, so now we know. Okay, we didn't know before, but now we know. So anyway, she sued him and in a matter of days, she literally settled, so he paid her out. But guess what? Guess who's coming forward now to speak on this issue? Cassie's husband. Cassie's husband has broken his silence, y'all, and he's coming forward to speak on this issue. Okay, even though Cassie got paid out and she decided to not not look forward, not move forward with the lawsuit, which I can completely understand. Right. If you move forward with the lawsuit, you're going to lose all this money and all this time and you only get one life to live. And he already did enough damage as it is. Right. So I can understand a settlement that her taking the settlement, I mean, um, but it just sucks because, the you know, this is what keeps that whole Hollywood thing going. They just go there to suffer. So if you're young and you're aspiring to be famous and go to Hollywood, I encourage you to think about that a lot more deeply because it is terrible over there. Terrible. It's, it's legitimately not even not worth the money. It's not worth the fame. It ain't worth it. At the end of the day, it's like they take your freedom in exchange for the money and the fame. They take your freedom and they take your psychology, your mental in exchange for the money and the fame. So you got to think about if that's a worth it trade to you, right? So, I mean, let's go ahead and see what's going on here because y'all, this has got me confused. Okay, it's got me confused. Yeah, he's he's a, he's his best one. <laughs> In a bombshell lawsuit, Cassie alleges the Bad Boy Records music mogul physically and sexually abused her throughout their 10-year relationship, which began when she was 19 years old and he was 37. In court documents, Ventura says, during their relationship, she was often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on by Combs, claiming he forced her to engage in acts with male workers. Cassie's husband is speaking out after Cassie filed a shocking lawsuit against her ex-boyfriend, Diddy, alleging years of physical torture, SA, trafficking, and more. Cassie is suing Diddy in federal court and her lawsuit is so disturbing that it actually has a trigger warning on the front page because it includes highly graphic information of a nature, including SA. Cassie broke up with Diddy in 2018. However, Diddy allegedly made her sign an NDA, which is why she stayed completely silent on their relationship for the past five years. However, it looks like the 
NDA expired, and although Diddy reportedly offered Cassie millions not to file the lawsuit, she made it clear this is not about money, and she wants to see Diddy brought to justice. And now Cassie's husband, Alex Fine, who is credited with helping her escape from Diddy, is speaking out on just how traumatized Cassie was by Diddy's depraved. Okay, first of all, y'all, Cassie's husband, super fine. <laughs> Okay, that's a good looking guy right there. Okay. Listen, this is insane. Like, so psychologically speaking, have y'all ever wondered why these males always go for super, super young women? Super, super young women. Like, in the case that we reviewed, and if you haven't watched this video, this this video, the video on Kiki Palmer, go ahead and and, and watch that video, right? But um, in the case on Kiki about Kiki Palmer, the, those two are both young and everything else, and but they're around similar ages, I believe. In this case, you can see that there's an age differential, like a big one. She's 19, he's almost 40. Okay. But in the Kiki Palmer video, Usher's name came out, came up. And Usher, when he was 13 years old, is when Diddy to you know connected with Usher when he was 13 and allegedly had Usher do some interestingly sexual things to him and who knows who else when he was 13. So psychologically, and now here we have Cassie, 19, and he's almost 40. So I often have a lot of ladies that ask, you know, about this age differential, and they seem to, to not think it's a big deal. But it's a very, very, very big deal. Very big deal. It's like it's like you're in Jupiter and he's in Mars, and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. Um, that's why they go for the young ones. If you haven't turned 28, I think 28 is when for a woman it's like the no BS meter goes from zero to literally to a hundred. Like no BS meter at 100%. That's why they don't go for women, typically go for women. Um, not typically, don't really ever, especially these celebrities and stuff, go for women that are older than 28. That is also why they try to psychologically manipulate women and tell women, oh, you're dried up at the age of 28. You're dried up. No one wants you. At the age of 30, no one wants you. Even though... As long as you look good to them, it don't matter what age you are, they will be there. They will be there. <laughs> if you want them, they will be there. It does they don't it doesn't so they they just lie and try to psychologically gaslight and manipulate you. So think about that. You see, here's another example. A 19-year-old with an almost 40-year-old 40 40-year-old 40 girl. What what Possible explanation can you have as at almost 40 for being with a 19 year old woman? Okay, and she stayed for 10 years, y'all. 10 years <clears throat> getting beat down for 10 years. Can you imagine living that life for 10 years? She literally had to. She literally sued him and he settled in a matter of days. So I can only imagine how terrible, how terrible this situation was that she was living under for 10 years. And she's gorgeous, gorgeous. A suit which was filed in federal district court in Manhattan alleges during that relationship, Combs would force Cassie to have with male prostitutes.
acts while he watched and filmed. The singer also claims uh, he would control her with beatings and drugs shortly after they met when she was just 19 years old. As you probably know, Diddy's reputation has been hanging on by a thread for years now, and Cassie isn't the only person who's made disturbing allegations against him. Diddy is alleged to have been involved in the deaths of multiple people, including his ex-girlfriend Kim Porter, Kim's ex-boyfriend Shakir Stewart, and rappers Tupac Shakur and Biggie. He was also previously accused by his ex-girlfriend Virginia of stomping on her stomach when she was pregnant, causing her to lose the baby. And then more recent allegations surfaced that Diddy may have groomed his teenage protégés Usher and Justin Bieber. And now that Cassie filed an explosive lawsuit against Diddy that includes allegations of SA, physical and trafficking, fans are saying this is the beginning of the end for Sean Diddy Combs and he's going to get the R. Kelly treatment. On Thursday, November 16th, the New York Times broke the news that Cassie filed a suit against Diddy in the Federal District Court in Manhattan. Y'all, don't do it. Ladies, just be single. If you, if you want to date a male, you can date them as long as they don't live with you, as long as they're not in your space 24 seven, as long as they understand that you can do whatever you want, including dating other people as well. I don't believe in boyfriend, girlfriend. I think that is the dumbest concept I, I have ever heard. Boyfriend, girlfriend is a cheap way for males to get women to be submissive to them to be loyal to them without them actually giving any true work or commitment. Okay, so they need to understand if you're going to date them, that you're, you, you could be a girlfriend, but that's not going to be in the traditional sense of girlfriend. That's going to be, I'm dating you and I can date whoever else I want as well. So if there's someone better that I want to that I want to also date or go on dates on, then that's what I'm going to do. Because women, stop wasting your time being a girlfriend, being this, being that, when none of it even means commitment. None of it means the commitment that you're looking for. Most ladies that that are girlfriends want marriage in the future. They might want kids. So why are you having this girlfriend, boyfriend in between? And if you want to have the girlfriend, boyfriend in between, then make sure that you don't just date him. You have to date other people too. Just because he's a boyfriend, that doesn't mean jack squat. Let me tell you something. That's, that's a meaningless label. Meaningless label. Okay. He'll say that he'll commit to you, but he's not going to. He's not going to drop you like a sack of rocks. If he were that serious, he would sign some legal documentation, especially if that's what you wanted. Okay, don't do this to yourself. This is crazy what I'm hearing. You know, Hollywood, it's not worth it. I'm just glad that Cassie got out with her life. I'm glad she got out with her life. And she made a series of allegations that are so disturbing that the court put a trigger warning on the front page of her lawsuit. According to the Times, Cassie filed her lawsuit under New York's Adult Survivors Act, which allows individuals to file lawsuits even after the expiration of the statute of limitations. Cassie's lawsuit is 35 pages long, and it details a number of horrific incidents that took place throughout her relationship with Diddy. The document begins by highlighting Diddy's acceptance speech at the 2022 BET Awards when he shouted out Cassie for holding him down in dark times. Also, Cassie for holding me down in the dark times. Love. At that time, most people thought Diddy was just corny for shouting out Cassie since she was already married to Alex Fine and had two children. However, this shout out sounds more like a threat. And Cassie's lawsuit states that the truth is that Cassie was held down by Mr. Combs and endured over a decade of his violent behavior and disturbed demands. 
The lawsuit then goes on to list a number of disturbing acts and Cassie claims that Diddy essayed her in her home after she tried to leave him, often punched, beat, kicked, and stomped on her, blew up a man's car after he learned that he was romantically interested in her, forced her to engage in sex acts with male sex workers, ran out of his apartment with a firearm in pursuit of a rival industry executive, demanded that Cassie carry his firearm in her purse just to make her uncomfortable and demonstrate how dangerous he is, introduced her to a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance and demanded that she procure illicit prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions. By the way, the man whose car Diddy blew up was Kid Cudi, and Cudi has now backed Cassie's claims, confirming through his spokesperson that Diddy blew up his car in 2012. Cassie's lawsuit further described how she met Diddy in 2005 when she... This psycho blew up Kid Cudi's car? Like, y'all... I don't even have the words. I don't even have the words. He belongs in jail. Literally, that's where this animal who is exhibiting and has been exhibiting animalistic behavior belongs. That's why I'm going to make my video on how you can tell who's alpha. Because money is literally just the first step. Money is just the first step. We still have a whole array of other things that we have to look at once they check that box. And so psychologically, you can see how he kept her in this relationship. And I think that the main way he kept her in this relationship for as long as he did was through fear. Because people like Diddy, they have different strategies. Some of them will gaslight you and do it primarily through gaslighting. Some of them will do it primarily through lying some of them, which is a part of gaslighting, but primarily through lying, right? Just blatantly lying. Some of them will do it through fear. And some of them will combine all of the above to psychologically keep, keep you enslaved mentally. And fear is one of the most powerful ways of doing that from a psychological perspective. Can you imagine wanting to leave or break up with someone, but he just blew up the car of, of some other guy just for looking at you the other day? H how do you even get, like, how do you get the courage to, to leave that? Usually, it becomes so unbearable for the survivors that it has to be worth risking their lives for. That's how unbearable it becomes because when it comes to these types of situations, and we're going to call it a SUS, just replace the S with a B. When it comes to ASUS situations or situations of ASUS, it always gets worse. Always. Once it's happened the first time, it will never be better. It will never stop, ever. I don't care what he says to you. I don't care what he buys you. I don't care. It will never be better it would it will always get worse because psychologically when someone is allowed to get away with something even if you left and came back if you left and you you left for a few months and then you're back together it doesn't matter that means he got away with it you got to leave and never look back then hopefully if he meets someone in the future he that he won't dare hopefully but once they do it once, it will never change. You have to leave the very first time. That's just how 
psychologically, that's just how it works. Because let me tell you, if you don't know about the concept of learned behavior, conditioning, conditioned behavior, there's several experiments that have been done within psychology. For example, in the, there was an experiment that was done with a, with a mouse, right? The mouse was in a, was in a box. It was kind of like a maze and they put food in several areas of the maze and they allowed the mouse to run around. And the first time the, the mouse ran around and found some food, guess what the mouse did? Okay. Every time the mouse would run around in the exact same way in the exact same pattern to get to that exact same food. So he would he, the mouse found the food the first time, they would have they would position the mouse at the starting point again. They would put the they would replace the treat or the food and the mouse ever since then took the same path to get to that same food each time. There's several several examples of those types of experiments that have been done. It's the same it's the exact same thing for human beings. Okay? If they cared about you, they would have never done it in the first place. If they had the level of empathy required to be in a healthy relationship, it would have never happened in the first place. So it doesn't matter how much begging or apologizing that they do, you need to understand that psychologically, it's not possible. They will do it again. So if you are in the position where it's happened once, now is the time because it will progressively only get worse. Don't tell, don't, don't be like Kiki Palmer telling people to mind their business. Don't let it get that far. You don't want to be, this is not something that you want to be alone in. You don't want to be alone in this. She was just 19 years old and he was 37. And she alleges that Diddy held complete control of her personal and professional life, making it virtually impossible to escape. She then goes on to describe how throughout their relationship, Diddy frequently beat her savagely. And while these beatings were witnessed by Diddy's staff and employees of Bad Boy, no one dared to speak up against their frightening and ferocious boss. Diddy would also allegedly often remind Cassie that he can cause her serious harm and he used illegal substances and threats to force her into repeated unwanted sexual encounters with male sex workers. According to Cassie, these men wore masquerade masks and took substances before they forced themselves on her. She claims Diddy called these arrangements freak-offs or FOs. Cassie also claims that over the years she again and again tried to escape. However, every time she did, Diddy's vast network of corporations and affiliated entities found her, threatening that if she didn't come back, she would never find work again. And when Cassie finally managed to escape and believe she was safe, Diddy essayed her in her home while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away. According to Cassie, even though she's fully escaped Diddy and built a family with her husband, she's still dealing with the physical and mental consequences that Diddy's repeated essay attacks caused her, and she has required intensive medical and psychological care to recover from the trauma she lived through. However, Cassie stated that she can no longer live in silence about what she endured because Mr. Combs remained immensely powerful and immensely dangerous, and she seeks justice for the decade of her life that Mr. Combs took away from her. The lawsuit also it's crazy. It's so crazy. So see, fear, fear mongering. Oh, your career is in my hands. Oh, you're never going to find work again. What will people think of you? I will destroy you on social media. Okay, because he has all of these resources. And then he also, he also would threaten her life. Oh, remember that I can beat you down, literally. Fear. So you, you know, was this worth the exchange for fame and fortune? Was it worth the exchange? Because it's a lot easier to dupe an individual that's 19 year old 19 years old 
into a really, really bad contract and a really, really bad situation by making it seem like the grass is so much greener, literally greener, because she's 19. And I want to be successful. I want the fame. I want the money. I, I, you know, and, and this guy already has all those things. He can help me get there. Yet you don't know and you don't realize that it's not worth the exchange. You don't understand what you're giving up through this exchange. You don't understand that you're giving up yourself, literally giving up yourself. Also mentions Diddy's late girlfriend, Kim Porter, who died under mysterious circumstances in 2018. And Cassie recalls how Diddy pursued her even though he was publicly in a relationship with Kim. According to Cassie, everyone in Diddy's circle was too scared to confront him and she was stunned at how easily he could get others to lie for him. She claims Diddy's employees would follow her everywhere, even at doctor's appointments, and he allegedly had police and doctors on his payroll. According to Cassie, on multiple occasions, Diddy had her personal medical records sent directly to his email address. She describes how she began experiencing memory loss, potentially due to excessive substance use and or head injuries from Diddy's attacks, and her MRI results were provided directly to Mr. Combs. Another disturbing example is when early on in their relationship, Diddy asked Cassie what she called her grandfather, and when she said she called her grandpa Pop Pop, Diddy insisted that she referred to him with that nickname. Cassie describes many instances of physical abuse, including one incident that took place after a party with Jay-Z when Diddy beat her in an Escalade using his hands and feet. There's another incident. Goodness gracious. So psychologically speaking, why would she, why would he ask her to call her Papa? Because that's what she calls her grandfather. Isn't that weird to y'all? The reason he did that is because he mentally wants her even more subdued. So if he's able to create for her, in her mind, a direct association between him and her grandpa, okay, she becomes even more vulnerable. She becomes even more subdued. Hence, making it even easier to control her. Okay. Make it an e making it even easier to have power over her. And as a direct result of this, it feeds his ego, makes him feel more powerful, makes him feel stronger, makes him feel more useful. The problem is because these people, these types of people are broken, like Didi, fundamentally broken, they, it never ends with them because they constantly need a supply renewal. Because they're filling in gaps and holes with random things that aren't capable of healing what's actually broken within them. So they essentially are forever unhappy. They'll never be able to experience true happiness. They can't do it. incident that allegedly took place in 2009 when Cassie says Diddy became enraged after he saw her talking to a music executive at a party in LA. He then dragged her out and stomped and kicked her in the face until she started vomiting. Until he saw how much damage he had done, Cassie says Diddy panicked and forced his staff to bring her to a hotel suite where she was required to stay for a week until marks on her face healed. According to Cassie, Diddy himself referred to their relationship as Bobby and Whitney and Ike and Tina. There are many more extremely disturbing details in Cassie's lawsuit where she describes her attempts to escape can you imagine getting beat on your face until you threw up and then and so your abuser oh, i said the word your asuser literally blanked out he blanked out while hit while while beating you What I want and need ladies to understand is that this is not a game. You cannot afford to wait 10 years. He will unalive you. He will un 
alive you. Males have no self-control, zero self-control. Which is why I always tell ladies, if he says he want to leave, let him go. They don't have the self-control that you think that they have. They don't. Oh, he loves me so much. He does not have the self-control. He's a male. If he wants to leave, if he's acting funny, if he's talking to someone behind your back and that wasn't the agreement that you both had, leave him. Let him go. Immediately. There's no arguments. There's no let's talk about it. There's no let's fix it. Let him go because he will literally unalive you. It is not a game. It's not an emotions thing. Oh, I love him so much. Leave him. It's not a game. Find someone else to love. Start loving yourself. How about that? Instead of getting your love from him and having him love you, how about you start having you love you? And if you love you, would you look at yourself in the mirror someone that you love and tell that person to stay. In Diddy's punishments, and she has all the receipts to back her claims. In fact, once you read her lawsuit in full, you'll wonder how Cassie even made it out alive. Now, part of the reason she was able to rebuild her life is because of her now husband, Alex Fine, who Diddy hired as a personal trainer for her. Cassie also mentioned the two children she shares with Alex in her lawsuit, saying she credits them with saving her from the trauma that had consumed over a decade of her life. Alex has now broken his silence on Cassie's lawsuit and showed his support by sharing a photo from their wedding day alongside a heart emoji. As for Diddy, his lawyer Benjamin Braffman, the same man who defended Harvey Weinstein, issued a statement denying Cassie's allegations and claiming she's trying to extort Diddy for $30 million. However, other sources are now saying $30 million is actually the amount Diddy offered to Cassie in exchange for her silence after her alleged NDA expired. Either way, it's safe to say the only supporters Diddy has left are those who are on his payroll and and fans who read Cassie's lawsuit are saying jail is not punishment enough for what he did to her. One fan said, no, because that's insane. I agree. Jail is not punishment enough for this scumbag. For this animal. What jail would be good enough? Hitting someone in the face until they throw up. Like, I, I don't even have the words. It's like I'm all, I'm having to try from, I can't, the emotion that this is arising out of me. Some people are just pure evil. Don't go anywhere close to them. Males, most of them, a lot of them, too many of them are just pure evil. Too many of them are like that. You have to be careful. I don't care if he just grabs you kind of tight. You gone. Because you just can't afford to take the risk. Because I really just read all 35 pages of this damn lawsuit and man, put Diddy under the jail. Meanwhile, fans are also praising Cassie's husband Alex for helping her overcome her trauma. One person wrote, I understand now why Cassie's husband snapped the way he did in the past when anything out of Diddy's mouth was her name. Not no male ego, it was protected. But let us know in the comments if you think this lawsuit will be the end of Diddy. And don't forget to check out this next story. I wish it would have been the end of Diddy because she ended up settling. I don't know what he did or what he threatened them with or how much the amount was. But I think just the fact that she filed this lawsuit and put all that those all the gruesome details of their relationship in there 
is huge for us. It's a huge win for us. So I'm really at least grateful that she did that. Well, y'all, let me know what you think in the comments below. This one really, really got to me. I can't, I mean, I can't even imagine. But let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.